The history of preservative use, it's, it, it's a long history and really has allowed um, people to formulate dog foods that they could uh, produce in bulk that required minimal handling or refrigeration or those sorts of things. So on the surface, uh, preservatives appear to be very useful and beneficial in the sense that we can have a large volume of dog food that we purchase at a cheap price, doesn't require special handling or special um, refrigeration. And so on the surface, it all sounds like this is a really good thing. But we're learning as time goes by, we've had several outbreaks of preservative-related disease, both in humans and animals. And we've seen that across the board. We've seen it with preservatives that are used on fresh fruits and vegetables, and we've seen them in preservatives that are used in commercial production of things like dog food and other types of food sources. The, the acute toxic, whenever a preservative makes it into the food chain, it goes through some research to verify that it isn't acutely toxic, either to laboratory animals or to the animals that it's ultimately going to be fed to or to people if it happens to be a human food. These sorts of studies look at acute toxicity. They look at different dosage ranges and they look at the effects acutely after maybe one or two exposures. But the chronic studies are, can, and, and so most of the preservatives that we use in, in commercial pet foods have undergone some scrutiny and, and have been verified to be maybe they're safe uh, at an acute, at, at the dosage that's used in the manufacture of the foods. But what's lacking sometimes is what, what happens with a lifetime accumulation or chronic dosing of some of these preservatives. We actually don't know uh, what the full ramification of eating preservatives throughout a dog's lifespan. We don't know what that can actually cause. We don't know that for humans either, for many of the things that are in our foods. And there's more and more evidence that can, that's indicating that they are associated perhaps with chronic diseases. And so we have to take a close look at that. Again, it, they served a really good purpose in allowing commercial pet foods to be manufactured in bulk for consumers to be able to purchase those at an affordable price. However, I think we've moved beyond the point where we need to question whether it's, if, if, if there's an alternative to just using preservatives to produce food in bulk. And just food for dogs and, and, and those that use fresh whole ingredients don't require preservatives and that's a key benefit to feeding the, these types of foods to your animals. Again, it's not worrying about the acute toxicity, but the lifetime accumulation we definitely is something we should all be concerned with.